The style that completely transformed a city and turned it into the metropolis it is known as today. The city of the rising sun has gone through many stages throughout history, each as iconic as the last. Today, it focuses on a more intriguing or at least attention-grabbing style, a fashion style we're going to explore today, one that catches the eye with its shapes and designs, known as Harajuku. Freedom has long been its defining characteristic. A mix of chains, fishnets, extravagant makeup, but also interesting combinations with kimonos. Harajuku is one of the most fascinating styles to come out of Japan. This street fashion born in Japan has over the years become eclectic and one of the most cutting edge. Located in the Harajuku district of Tokyo Prefecture, this style is too free, relying entirely on creativity. Over the decades, it has become the epicenter of clothing culture, influencing other current clothing styles. But like everything else, before it could become a movement that would transcend the years beyond a passing trend, it had to have an origin. Where does this style come from? Well, it originated at a time when Japan was coming out of a restrictive era. Remember, they were coming out of wars and conflicts strict ways of life. So in the 1980s and 1990s, when young people began to gather in the Harajuku district to express their creativity and rebellion through fashion, this movement solidified as a response to Japan's rigid social norms. It's considered a movement because it didn't die out quickly. Its manifestos were born out of rebellion. The need to express freedom against the dull and gray colors of old Japan. That's how, over time, the Harajuku style was born. It wasn't just a movement anymore. It was a style that evolved and even incorporated influences from various subcultures and fashion movements. From kawaii to punk, the Harajuku style explores different forms and interesting styles. But what is Harajuku and what isn't? Well, we're going to answer that. For the Japanese, this movement was like the pop art of fashion. While the Americans are playing with disco colors and various stages of rock and exaggerated personality, wearing explosive outfits, the Japanese had their own clothing movement that eventually influenced the rest. That's why Harajuku, like its colorful counterpart to the north, began to embrace bold, eye catching styles and colors. A narrative of mixed prints and layered clothing. In this way, they eventually formed a very interesting philosophy that structured the movement's most important manifesto. The DIY approach, which means do it yourself, was too necessary to constitute itself as a movement. And it relates to this colorful movement because it involves society in the process. Allowing individuals to create unique and personalized outfits. Perhaps we can explain that one of the most important elements was exaggeration, another of its manifestos, including creative makeup and distinct hairstyles, making the Harajuku aesthetic a celebration of diversity and originality, challenging traditional fashion conventions, and fostering a culture of boundless self expression. Emerging from the category of the ugly to establish itself as the beautiful is one way of changing the ideology of a society. But how did the Harajuku style and movement spread? Some general subcultures joined this movement to give it more variability, where we find some interesting styles, such as Lolita fashion. Lolita fashion is inspired by Victorian and Rococo clothing. Yes, it comes from a distant past, even from the 1500s. But because of this, it is characterized by dresses with petticoats, lace, and delicate accessories. This style is meant to create an image of innocence and nostalgia, and is divided into variations such as Gothic Lolita, Sweet Lolita, and Classic Lolita. 
Decora. This is mainly characterized by its excessive style, whether in colors, glitter, accessories, being what anyone would call the life of the party, or in Japan, considered playful and whimsical. Followers of this subculture usually wear multiple layers of clothing and decorate themselves with toys, stickers, and other childish items. Gyaru. The Gyaru style is characterized by exaggerated and glamorous makeup and hairstyles inspired by Western fashion. It's the disco era, but in the 90s. This style mainly focuses on breaking with traditional Japanese beauty standards, promoting an image of confidence and daring. Visual K. This one is interesting. Influenced by rock music and glam, the Visual K style is characterized by elaborate costumes, dramatic makeup, and extravagant hairstyles. This subculture celebrates theatricality and self expression, blurring the lines between musical genres and fashion. It's funny how a subculture of a subculture understood the glam style of rock more than the fans of rock themselves. Now, what do you think if we take a look at some of the biggest and most important designers and brands? Comme de Garçons. This company was founded by Mrs. Ray Kawakubo. This important designer founded the company Comme de Garçons, which was characterized by bringing the Harajuku style, but from the perspective of Master Kawakubo, focusing on that subculture that challenges that traditional style. A bathing ape. Bape. Let's talk about a bathing ape, better known as Bape, but not the ones you smoke. We're talking about the famous and bold clothing brand that focuses on prints and camouflage, accompanied by various interesting fabrics, founded by Nigel. The brand has made a significant mark in urban fashion, mixing elements of pop culture and streetwear. 6% Toki Toki. Although more associated with the Decora movement, 6% Toki Toki drew inspiration from the vibrant colors and whimsical style of Harajuku, all thanks to the genius of Sebastian Masuda, and established itself in the popular kawaii culture and creative self expression. Global impact. But stepping out of Japan, what can we find worldwide that has ended up influencing? As every movement brings about a permanent change in society, international designers and brands have adopted and reinterpreted elements of these styles and incorporated them into their own collections. The influence of Japanese street fashion can be seen on runways around the world, where designers are experimenting with bold colors, mixed prints, and creative approaches. This brings us to companies outside of Japan that have been influenced with numerous Western brands, resulting in collaborations and collections that reflect the Harajuku aesthetic. Notable examples include HM's collaboration with Comme des Garçons, which brought avant garde Japanese fashion to a global audience, and Gwen Stefani's Harajuku Lovers, a brand that blends pop culture and fashion inspired by Harajuku style. This has made it a significant symbol of culture, both in terms of self expression, through creating one's own clothes and rebelling against social norms, providing a creative outlet for young Japanese to explore and affirm their identities in an environment that values conformity. Through fashion, individuals can communicate and connect, challenging social expectations and celebrating diversity. But it doesn't stop there. Harajuku style continues to evolve alongside street fashion, adapting to new cultural influences and technological advances. With increasing globalization and cultural exchange, Harajuku fashion is likely to remain a source of inspiration for designers and fashion enthusiasts worldwide. As technology advances, new forms of self expression and customization will emerge because that's how the world works. But none of it matters without your likes and comments. See you next time.